What's going on guys? So a couple of years ago, I think it was like December 2021, I made this video about server settings in Scum. And to this day, that video continues to get viewed because it was a full explanation, or at least what I consider a full explanation, of how to basically set all your settings on your single player and your multiplayer. And that's still around. And in fact, to this day, it's still getting views. I mean, it still continues to increase in views and people keep watching it for information because not a lot has changed as far as the settings are concerned. We've had new settings since uh, a couple of the previous versions that have been updated, but for the most part, they would stayed the same. But recently I've been asked that I should do a new video on uh, the abandoned bunkers and those settings, as well as some of the trader stuff. So I said, you know what, let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and go through some of those items and see if we can actually give people the information that they're looking for because i gotta be honest with you when this first came out i was also kind of like okay what are the settings what do i have to change where are the ranges and so forth because one of the things that we enjoy about running our own server and also controlling our single player settings is that we get to make it our own and one of the bad things that happens with scum developers is that although they give us these changes and these features and these updates and whenever they change the server settings or the trader uh, file, that's a, J a JSON file, I call, I call it JSON, I don't care. Uh, they never give us explanations as far as ranges or what happens if you go higher or lower than whatever the default value is set to. Now I'm hoping that somewhere, somehow, someone <laughs> on, uh, on their side, on the dev team is working on documentation for when they do the full release because it would be really beneficial for people that are running their own servers, as well as people that want to just tweak their settings to play their own way. It's okay. It's allowed. Now, I've got to say this. I know that there's people out there that hate these types of videos or hate to change any settings and think that the game should be played the way it was made. Well, I'm sorry, but some of us do like to tinker with the actual game and change it up a little bit to each their own. So don't hate, it's okay. Anyways, let's get started with this. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to uh, desktop mode here. Okay, so what we have here in front of us is the local file and the multiplayer file. These are the server setting INI files for local player on the left-hand side and for multiplayer or running your own private server on the right-hand side. Now, that's actually my server, the Wolfpack, uh, that I run on Ping Perfect. I'm not plugging anybody in here. I'm just saying that's where I'm running it. And this is where we're going to start off. We're going to start off with in the actual world section. And I'm showing you there's it's my settings are very similar between my single player and my multiplayer uh, server because of the fact that I like to test things out. There are only a couple of things that I change just to make it easier to record some videos or maybe even to uh, try out certain things on my single player. But mostly they're kind of the same. So this is what we're going to do under the world section in your server settings INI file, you're gonna find this section here. I'm gonna just scroll down. This is where you do all the uh, puppet spawning and things like that, but they have a new section that's called uh, scum.abandonbunker commotion threshold. And then there's also threshold per player extra, uh, also bunker enemy activation threshold and bunker enemy activation threshold per player extra. Okay, now, I have modified mine already, and I'm gonna tell you what these numbers mean, but the best way to explain this is to show you directly from a Steam forum where Kick, I like call him Kick, I'm not gonna say the X's, is one of the developers or one of the quality control people. I don't know exactly what his job title is, but I know who he is. So he's put out this information after people were asking, hey man, what is the range? How can I set this up? Uh, what does it mean if I increase or decrease, which is a valid question. So he finally put this information out. This was back in August 7th. And thank goodness this is there so that we can use this. And this is what it comes out. So if you notice, if you ever open up your server INI file, you'll probably see this settings here, which will be negative one across the board. That's kind of what they set up as far as a base. Well, I'm not going to say a base because they're calling base something else. But let's say that's the setting that all the official servers have and that all your regular servers get set to before you change this. Negative one. And then you wonder, well, what happens if I go up? So this is their base default settings. According to them, their base default settings 
are four for the for the uh, commotion threshold, 0.75 for the commotion threshold per player extra, and then enemy activation threshold of 5.5, and the enemy activation threshold extra per player as one. So that's their base settings. Now they do say in order to make it harder, you need to put the numbers below their default value. So this is why if you notice the official servers and when you first launch this, negative one is below all of these default values and therefore it is very hard to go through there and, and not get attacked and not get a, a razor spawning in front of you or something. So that's the reason why that's happening. So let's see. So in order to make it harder, we go below the default values. Now, if you want to make it easier, and by the way, before we continue, they did give you an example of going below. This is going a little bit below. Uh, if you go down to two from four, if you go to 0 0.25 instead of 0 0.75, uh, 1.5 instead of 5.5, and well, obviously these all make sense. So if you put everything to zero, it will become really hard. So obviously, like I said, everything's at negative one, which is more difficult than zero. So zero is just really hard. Negative one is even harder. So what do you do if you want to make it easier? So that's what this section right here covers. It says, if you want to make it really easy, you set it to the max amount, which is, well, it's not really the max amount because I think you can even go as high as a thousand. I don't know if it will take any effect, but I know that it is possible because I've actually done it. So if you go in this case, let's say a hundred on each one of those, that's going to make it super easy where they're not going to hear you. There's not going to be any real commotion. The activation threshold is going to be pretty high. So you're going to be fine. You can walk in there like nothing. I don't think anybody's putting it at 100. Uh, if you notice, I put my testing local server or local settings to 20, 10, 20, and 10. Obviously, there's no extra players. It's a single player session, but it is 20, which means that I can just walk around. This, this is ridiculously high, and it's only meant to be easy because it's my single player for testing mode. Now, on my regular server, and by the way, we're looking at these, um, these settings here, which are the highest to make it the easiest. On my, on my local, I'm sorry, not my local, <laughs> on my uh, multiplayer server, I have it set to five, two, five, and two, which means it's the commotion threshold is five. If there's extra players, it goes up by two. If the activation threshold is at the five and the threshold per player added to that activation is two. So that's the way those are. Now, if we go back to their default, their default is four, so I'm going a little easier than default. Uh, their addition is 0.75. I'm going a little bit harder than that. Uh, or I should say a little easier because it's adding to it. I gotta check how that is. We might have to um, double check that. And then 5.5, I'm going at five. One is their, their per player threshold for activation. I'm going to two. Now you do what you want, but that's basically what these numbers mean. And I'll leave this here for a moment so you can, and I'll put it over to the right hand side so I'm not blocking it. So you can screenshot this, so you can look at it, figure it out for yourself. But now you have kind of a rule to follow. And that's pretty much it. They haven't given us any control when it comes to how many razors come out, uh, how hard the razors hit. Can you turn off the razor damage? Can you get rid of the razors completely? No. None of those settings are in the game. There is nothing like that. Same thing with Brenner. You can't control Brenner as far as whether he's available or not. You can't turn off his damage. You can't also, you, you're, there's no like making his damage less or anything like that. Brenner is just there. And by the way, in case you didn't know this, at this time, you cannot kill Brenner. It is not possible. There is no way of actually destroying him whatsoever. You can make him bleed, and when you make him bleed, you can make Phoenix Tears out of his blood, so that's something good to know. But as far as like being able to turn them on or off, Razors or Brenner cannot be turned on or off at this time. And by the way, I've tried turning off all damage in the game just to see, and we turned off all damage, went into the bunker, fought some Razors. The Razors still kill you because their blades are knives and for whatever reason even when you turn melee off 
there is nothing stopping them from actually hurting you. So sorry about that, but you'll have to test getting hurt. Uh, the other thing, Brenner also can burn you even if you have all your damage turned off too. So there's that. Uh, I thought I'd, I'd share that information, but that's as much as we have for the abandoned bunker. So let's move on. I want to talk about traders for a little bit. Uh, I'll get this out of the way. Okay, so now moving on to the trader or economy override JSON file. This was pretty straightforward. Some things have changed. You'll notice that the single player version and the uh, private uh, multiplayer version are basically exactly the same. There are some things that don't really matter on the single player session. Like for example, prices subject to, to uh, player count. Uh, but what I like to do on single player, and I would suggest you do this, is change it to zero because of the fact that the, depending on how you're running your, your, um, your amounts for all of your items, this here can actually increase the number or the value. What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> this can increase the cost of the items because there's only one player, obviously single player. Uh, the more players there are, supposedly the way this works is more players, the amount or cost of the item goes down. Really weird, but I've noticed that on my multiplayer. So I went ahead and turned this off because I don't want it to be to, for prices to change based on the amount of players that are playing. I want it to just be whatever I set it to. And that's kind of it. So I will just want to touch base on that first. So let's talk about these areas here really quickly. I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible, but this is the area that we want to really discuss. I've got some notes here on the side and I'll keep, I'm going to talk single player because of the fact that, like I said, it's exactly the same. And that way I can put this to the side here. So I, I managed to get some notes from the internet in regards to what each one of these things uh, does, at least a better explanation. Some of these things really don't matter and you're not going to touch them, but Hey, if you want to mess with them, that's up to you. Like for example, Economy reset time and hours. That's the very first one at the top. And it says here, and I'll go ahead and just, I'm going to highlight the ones that we talk about as we do. It says, although traders slowly and organically regenerate stock and money, if this value is set in hours, for example, two for 2.0 for two hours, the economy will instantly reset at the given interval, fully restocking traders, inventory, and money. If the value is less than zero, it will never reset. The default is negative one, meaning that the default with the default, there will never be an instant reset like this. So default is normally negative one, which is less than zero, which means that the economy will never reset. That's fine. For me, I put it at nine hours, which is kind of like a work day. And this is nine real hours. So when nine hours passes in the day, which is somebody's nine to five, let's say, then that means that the economy is going to reset the goods and the monies and all of that is going to reset and it's fine. What I don't understand is that we have a very similar other setting in here that, um, that does kind of the same thing. So we'll look at that in a moment. So here's the next thing, prices, randomization, time and hours. So if you wanted to do this, it's basically how many hours it takes to randomize prices. If the value is less than zero, it never randomizes. The default is negative one. Again, same thing. If it's negative one, it's never going to randomize. I like to play around with this. And so I set mine to three hours. So every three hours, the prices will randomize. It's kind of like, hey, there's a sale going on. Three Every three hours, new sale. So that's the way I see it. Sometimes it's a bad sale. You never know. These next areas here, I'm going to kind of skip over, but I'll tell you exactly what they are. This is basically the time in game. It's, it takes for the rotating of items in the store. Now you can disable this entire thing with another setting here at the bottom that says trader rotation enabled zero or one would be zero as an off one as an on. And I turned this off. So none of these top ones matter because I don't want the items to rotate. In other words, I want the items to always be available regardless, unless I've marked items to be hidden, which will never be available. And we'll get to that in a moment. But as far as items that should be on sale and are on sale, they should always be there. So I don't like this whole rotation thing. I'm not sure why they do it, but that's what's there. Uh, fully restock tradable hours. This is the one I was saying. 
why do I have this and have this as well? It doesn't make any sense. Economy reset time and hours, and then fully restock tradable hours. So just for fun's sake, I set this to three, so it still restocks every three hours instead of every nine, but at nine, it resets everything anyways. Uh, let's see. We already talked about prices to change. Uh, trader funds change rate per hour multiplier. I set that to three. That kind of is the same thing. It changes the rate of when the, uh, the, the funds for the trader get uh, reset, basically. And so that's, again, the same thing. This is already done here, but I set mine to three. It happens every three hours. Uh, let's see, what's the other part that I wanted to kind of talk about? Prices to, to, for players to change, we are based on player count. We've already talked about that. And there was a good discussion here on the side about it for a while. This happened back uh, last year when this originally started, back in 2022. And people were wondering, maybe it gets cheaper when more people are online. And there was people that didn't understand it. And they said, can we turn this off? And yes, you could turn it off by changing the, uh, the actual setting to zero instead of one. Again, I would advise you turn that off unless... For some reason you want that fluctuation for me i do not so that's kind of the basic stuff here everything else is pretty standard and pretty self-explanatory like economy log logging you can turn that on if you want to view that later look at your logs uh traders unlimited funds whether you want them to have unlimited funds you set that to one if you don't set it to zero i keep mine to zero if you want them to have unlimited stock you can set it to zero but guess what it's resetting every three hours anyway so what does it matter uh, let's see. This is another one that I like to turn off. It's called uh, only after player sale, tradable availability enabled. In other words, there's certain items that are not available until they're sold to the actual trader. I don't like that. I turned that off. Uh, we turned off rotation enabled. Yes. Enable fame point requirements. Okay. So this one here will probably for single player be turned off unless you really want to experience that grind feeling. So as we know, fame points have been kind of nerfed or kind of screwed up to where it's harder to increase your fame points. And one of the things in the traders is that you can set up how much fame points you have to have in order to buy a certain item. So that's actually a good thing, but it can get a little bit difficult uh, once you can increase your, your fame points. So if you're doing single player and you don't want to deal with that, you can just simply set this to zero right here, and then it'll be disabling the fame point requirement. So just keep that in mind in case that's something you want to mess with. If you wanted to kind of make your multiplayer server that way as well, you can do that on that end too. It's right there. Like I said, they're exactly the same. Okay, now I'm not going to get too into this next section other than to point out a couple of minor things. One of the main things that has changed since the last time I made this video is this bottom area. By the way, what I'm showing you here is traders. This is the section. Under traders, there's going to be armories. In this case, this is the A0 armory. And within that armory, all of these, each one of these is an item. In this case, this is a flare cartridge. Its base purchase price is five. Its base sell price is two. I think you know what that means. That's kind of self-explanatory. Take a moment to think about it. This is an area that I never touch. It has to do with Delta price. And I think this has to do with the way that the, the randomization of the pricing. This is in conjunction one of these other, but I don't mess with this. So I'm not going to talk too much about it. Because I'm a big believer that if you don't know something, don't assume it and make it up because then other people are going to be confused. So I just don't mess with this. When I don't know about a setting, I leave it alone. Uh, the other thing here is, this is really important, can be purchased. Okay. I mentioned, I was going to mention this earlier and then I held back from, from talking about it. And I, can't, I think I removed it from my video. One of the things that we have to understand is you don't have to have every single item listed in this economy override JSON file. I personally do only because I like to mess with this this way, but can I just tell you that it is over, how many? Seven, the 1,000 
lines of code. So obviously you don't want to do that. That's a lot of code to look through. But the only reason that you would list an item in your JSON override file, in your economy override file, is because you want to change the default values here. And one of the things that we would change is this value right here. Now default does not mean for sale, does not mean visible. And this is probably the most important thing I can tell you. Default means whatever is set hard-coded in the code by developers, the code that we can't get to. So for example, if they have, if they have it hard-coded with their traders, whenever you play the game, that the flare cartridge is always to be visible, to be sold, then default means that. But if for some reason, like let's say screwdrivers, and they decided that screwdrivers should not be sold and they made it as the default of not sellable, then default would be not visible. Does that make sense? I think it does. So this is the place where you would say, and by the way, the value is true or false. So if I wanted to sell flare cartridges and I wanted them to appear, I would write true. I could leave a default. That's fine too, because chances are flare cartridges need to be there. The way to test this is if it says default and it's listed on there and you go into the game and you don't see it for sale in that particular trader, it's because that default is, is supposedly not visible. So you go in here and you set it to true, you'll be able to sell it. If you don't want to sell this, let's say it's uh, an explosive arrow. Let's go to this one down here. I don't want to sell explosive arrows in my shop. So I'm going to say false. So those are the two differences here. True or false? False means you're not selling it. It does not appear in the store. True means you are selling it and it will be in the store. Here's the other thing. All right. The next part of this is the part that I want to point out that has changed. This wasn't here before. Required fame points per item. Now, it does have a negative one because that is the default. These developers are very big at using the negative one as a default value in their code. Whatever reason, that's what they use. Negative one simply means they're using the hard-coded default value for required fame points for this particular item. They've already hard-coded this into their code. Now, if you don't want to use their hard-coded setting, then you change how much fame points you want. For a flare cartridge, you only have to have 50 fame points, let's say, and that's fine. And if I was selling explosive arrows, let's say I'm gonna set this to true, and I say, you know what? I wanna set the fame points to be 300 for uh, explosive arrows. So you can't purchase them unless they're 300. If you don't wanna mess with this and you're fine with the developer's hard-coded default settings of whatever the fame point should be for each item, simply leave it as negative one because negative one will take the default and that's it. So that's kind of the way this runs through. Again, like I said, you don't have to have every single item listed here. You don't have to do that. You only have to have the items that you want to make a change to. So if for some reason you don't want to sell uh, explosive arrows or let's scroll down a little bit. Let me go to another one. You don't want to sell cross bolts. Crossbow bolts, sorry. You don't want to sell ammunition for the 38, whatever it is. Then you would take that piece of code and you would put it in and therefore you can then modify this to whatever it is that you want. And that's how it is. I happen to have everything listed in here because as that's the way I roll and I kind of go through it and I change it as I want. It gets confusing, right? There's a lot of stuff in here. All right, I'm going to make it simple for you. This is one last thing I'm going to show you. And this was actually part of the previous patch. Let me show you this real quick. This will not take long. I will actually refresh here. And I'm going to, I'm going to click on this upload. And then I'm going to browse for this actual file. And, that, and my file is actually on my desktop because right now I have a copy there. I'm going to hit autocorrect. The reason I'm hitting autocorrect is because my code was my 
file was wrong before and it actually fixed it. You can test it out. Do not do autocorrect and then you'll see the bugs that are there. And then you can redo this, just reload the page and do it again. I do autocorrect. I'm gonna choose my file. Uh, it should be right about local economy right here. Click on that. And now I can say this has found no bugs and I click continue. What does this file do? Now you saw this on the recent scum patch notes that they were shouting out these developers. I can't remember who made this, but his information is here, I'm sure. So here, I'll leave this, this link in the actual description, but this is exactly the same file that we were looking at on the left-hand side, except the only difference is it's in, it's like a configurator. It has a trader's money reset time. There it is there, nine. It has price randomization. There it is there. So every single one of these, I'm going to make this a little smaller. Every single one of these variables is here, including the ones that are one and zero, which are true or false. And this is exactly matches. Now that's fine. This is easier. You can do it this way. And now you're saying, well, what about items? Well, you'll click on items and in items, you'll go to your sector, a zero. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger now because you'll need to see this now. So this is the a zero armory. I'm going to choose the armory. There's 680 items because that's all the items that they sell. The way I added them all was simply, I didn't have to type in each one of these. I just had to go to add and then add all. And there's all of them there. Or if I want to add one by one, that's up to me. Remember I said, you don't need to add them all. You can just add the ones you're looking for. And that's fine too. So for example, let's try this. Let's say I'm going to clear my list. It's clear. By the way, this is not writing in real time. This is saving everything locally here on your uh, web browser. You don't, you don't get any of this until you export the file. So don't worry about messing up here because you don't, this is just for practice. So now let's say I wanted to add, and one of the things I want to add, let me find it under range weapons. And I believe it's called the BMG. Is it the BMG? Is that how it is? I'm not sure. Maybe it's not. Uh, let's try an AK. Hmm. It's not coming up. Okay. Let's try this a different way. All right. Well, it's not coming up that way. So let's try AK. There it is. Oh, it's weird. So they might have to fix their, their site. What if I do BMG? So there's the BMG ammo. Uh, what is that weapon called? I forgot. Well, let's just use an AK, an AKS. Okay. Say I don't want to sell an AKS or I want to change the model. I can just add this one. And now it added it and close that here. It is here. And I can simply change the buy, the sell. And why does this look so bad? Oh, there it is. Yeah. He needs to fix his resizing on his website, but there is the amount there. As you can tell, it's kind of wrong. I'm going to go ahead and do this. That way I can see it. Yeah. His resizing isn't working right on the website. So that's something that they'll have to work on because that says 183 and it's just say 1833. So that's wrong either way. So if I want to make any changes here, I can visible hide uh, fame points amount. I can change that if I wanted to. And then when I export this file, that will be the only one in armory for a zero. But again, I'm going to clear a list. I'm going to add all in this case, get rid of this and then add all. And there they are. Click off of that. And here's everything. So that is a quick way of adding everything to your JSON file. And when you're ready and you've done all this, you hit export file and it gives you your file right there. Just like the way we were looking at simply click in that area. It will select everything. If you're not comfortable with that, go ahead and do control a or command a, I think is on Apple. I don't think anybody's using an Apple for scum, but just in case and simply copy it and then paste it into your file in here and then you're good. Save it and you're good to go. So that's pretty much it. So I really hope that helps. That's kind of a, a little touch up on what changes we've seen. There might be a couple of little things here and there that they've changed, but for the most part, it pretty much stayed the same. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single one of the server settings, a change because there's not that many. And the stuff that is there is pretty kind of self-explanatory. Now I do believe that they are going to add some more things 
for us to be able to handle as we get closer to full launch of this game. But as it stands right now, it's pretty much set in stone as to what we have and what we have to mess with. So I hope this helped you guys. If you have any questions or if you have any other requests, maybe something that you'd like me to go into more detail on, on these server settings, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to do that. I actually enjoy making these videos uh, more than I do actually playing the game sometimes. So just let me know and I'll be happy to do that. If you have not liked or subscribed, make sure you do that. That will help me out. I'd really appreciate it. And that way I can keep doing these. Because as you can tell, I haven't been uploading a lot lately just because I haven't really played too much of Scum uh, that's anything interesting. I mostly do PvE. But from time to time, I love to share any information that I learn. So until next time, hope you have a great one. Take care of yourself. I'm out. Peace.